say, can you see by the dawn's early light? Dude. What? What are you doing? I'm singing Star Spangled Banner with MTV microphone. What no. are you doing? No, no. You what? should be studying how studying? human caused stress placed on the environment affects your life in a food web. Oh, that's just boring. Yes! In order to do this, we are going to have to study how a human caused stress placed on the environment affects the life in a food web. We should turn to Matt Donato. Using my amazingly elite Photoshop skills with Adobe Creative Suite CS3, I will create a food web that will show you the biotic factors in the wetlands. What? The most basic organisms on the food web are the bacteria and plankton, otherwise known as the producers, and are also called autotrophs. They obtain energy from chemosynthesis, therefore they make it themselves, hence them being called autotrophs. Some bacteria even feed off other bacteria, making them decomposers. Several fish live in the wetlands, such as the herring, smelt, and perch. These fish are the primary consumers since they are the first to obtain energy from a source that they do not create themselves. The fish are then eaten by various species of birds, such as the great blue heron and the great egret. These are the secondary consumers. Since they eat fish, they are called carnivores, but more specifically, they are called pescivores. One bird, however, the waterfowl, feeds on plankton and dead bacteria, mainly small organisms rather than the small fish. In addition, the snapping turtle is another wetland pescivore, since it eats the small fish that live in the environment. The fish, birds, and turtles are heterotrophs since they do not make the energy themselves. And that is a basic food web of the wetlands. Although more organisms are involved, this food web shows the basic transfer of energy through a broad representation of different species. Hello, now we'll be talking about relationship in the wetlands. As you can see in this food web, as Matt showed earlier, each organism has different relationship with another. In the first tropic level, there are bacteria and planktons. The bacteria depend on the dead bacteria, which shows prey and predator relationships. In the second tropic level, the fish, which are herring, smelts, and the perches, are the predators of the bacteria and planktons. Then, on the top of the food web, there are secondary consumers, which are the great blue heron and the great egret. Their preys are the smaller fishes, like the perches and the herrings. Then, there are the waterfowls, which are the predators of the plankton and dead bacteria. Lastly, there are snapping turtles, which eat the fish as its prey. These are the relationship in our great food web. Now we'll turn to Casey for abiotic factors in the wetlands. Ah, sorry, I was emptying my wetlands. As abiotic factors in the wetlands, chemicals are poured into the wetlands and then the wetlands change them into less toxic items. These affect the health of the animals and may cause them to slowly die out. If the water is contaminated and the plants drink it, the animals who eat those plants will get sick and the animals who eat those animals will get sick too. Therefore, it affects the whole food web. Loss of land. This causes the animals to become overcrowded which can result in competition and death for a lot of animals. The animals that live in wetlands, such as river otters and marsh rabbits, will be forced to move to areas where it's harder to live, and the animals that feed off the rabbits and otters will not be able to survive. Therefore, once again, it affects the whole food web. Storms. Storms may cause animals to die out, which affects the food chain because of the lack of food for each animal. Storms tend to cause disruption in the water, making it hard for birds such as the great egret or great blue heron to obtain food from the water because all of the fish are hiding, and this then affects the rest of the food chain. Turbidity and salinity are also increased in storms, making it harder for fish such as the perch and the herring to live. The problems occur when levels of the nutrients nitrogen and phosphorus increase. Although these elements are essential for life, they also cause the algae population to skyrocket. These plants consume oxygen as they decompose, leaving the water depleted of dissolved oxygen that all aquatic animals need for survival. 
While the Chesapeake Bay remained untouched and undeveloped, the tributaries had a complex structure of natural barriers that would prevent too much release of the nutrients into the water, but those have been stripped away while humans settled. The space for aquatic animals to live and thrive has been greatly reduced too. In the summer months, a wide expanse stretching for hundreds of miles emerges as an area completely unsuitable for animals to survive. The oxygen level in the water is lethal, and those organisms that are not mobile, living in the soil, die. Waters of this type is called anoxic. Dangerously low levels of dissolved oxygen are known as hypoxia. And this concludes our presentation of How Does Human Cause Stress Placed on the Environment Affect the Life in a Food Web? We hope you have enjoyed our fun and educational presentation on how a human cause stress placed on the environment affects life in a food web. Three, two, one. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, 